All right, so Romero Brito, I hope you enjoyed uh, looking at his slideshows. He's one of my top five favorite artists. I just love how he's so positive, how his artwork is bright, it is fun. It is all things we love like dogs and hearts and people. And uh, he's such a giving person. He's still alive today, going strong, making great art. So I hope you enjoyed that. So if you picked his project, one of your first steps was to do was to pick a positive word. I picked bravo, right? Bravo to you guys for finishing out the, this school year. And then you were supposed to pick bubble or block letters. I clearly picked bubble. You, as you can see, all my letters are rounded. The inside of the letters are all rounded. All the corners and edges are rounded. I did like Romero Brito where I outlined all my letters in black. Sharpie is really best because when you go to erase your pencil lines, like I have a little pencil line here, I can erase it and my black marker is not going to smudge. So you should definitely just go over your whole entire paper, making sure that you get rid of any pencil lines before you start adding your crayons or colored pencil or marker. Now, one of the outstanding things about his artwork is the colors, yes, they're bright and they're vibrant, but he also has patterns within each letter. So each letter has its own pattern or he divides up a letter sort of in half. So I'm gonna use my Sharpie again and he kind of like makes a squiggle line like that's kind of his um little style there let's say so there's my b i'm gonna try to make that black line as thick as my outline of the black line so depending on which letters you want to put a um little uh separation in you, you certainly can so now when it's time to make the patterns you can start doing that with either colored pencil crayon or magic marker. Um, I have some magic markers here and you can start drawing with those. If you're going to make a straight line pattern, like a stripe pattern, you gotta use a straight edge or you have to use a ruler. So here's my ruler. If you don't have um, a ruler at home, you know, just the outside part of a box would work great. So I pick the color I want if I wanna make a stripe pattern and I start drawing my lines. I wanna make sure that my stripes are the same thickness. You wanna always keep it consistent. Remember repetition here in pattern, you want to keep that consistency so that it looks neat. And obviously you wanna always have good craftsmanship. So how you choose to color in those areas is really important. So if you are using a magic marker, it's a little bit different than coloring with a crayon. With a crayon, you know, you color back and forth, back and forth, but with a marker, it's a little different. If you had me last year in seventh grade, you kind of know this, but you always want to keep a piece of scrap paper under the hand you're writing with so that it doesn't smudge. And then you just want to go from one side of the shape all the way to the other. It's kind of like a brush stroke, but with a marker versus a paintbrush. So here I would do, and I would go all the way down. And now you could see I have nice neat lines. Plus this keeps your marker from drying out and it keeps your letters neat. If you want to do a double coat, sometimes kids do that. So it looks a little bit more solid. You can certainly do that. And as you can see, that looks really great. Now, what about if you wanna do, um, let's say a circle pattern, a polka dot pattern? Well. I'm an art teacher, so it makes sense that I have, you know, um, a circle stencil, let's say at home. So I can take that circle stencil, pick the size that I want, and I can start tracing these circles. Obviously you can go off the page. What I mean by that is like go off of the letter and you wanna spread them out, right? So I'm going to make my circle pattern across that whole thing. Um, if you don't have, you know, a circle stencil, one of these at home, I mean, think about recyclable materials like a cardboard pa uh, toilet paper roll. That works great. You can totally trace that um, and that would work too. Uh, one of the other things as I was doing my project for 2D for you guys, the other one with Michael Albert, as I was going through food boxes, I said, oh, look at this dull pineapple. Um, 
cardboard box. It already has kind of like shapes made. So I just punch this out and I can take that and I can trace that shape. That could become my stencil. Um, let's say I want to make a, a heart, right? So he, that's really popular in his art. Another one of his pieces that is really popular are flowers and you want those to be consistent too. So if you start drawing hearts and flowers, they're not really going to be the, the same. So here you have these cardboard boxes lying around, right? I showed you, if you looked at the other video with Michael Albert's work, how to tear apart a box, make it flat, right? And then I can draw, let's say, the shape I want. So if I want a heart, you know, I can draw my heart here. Okay, Romero Brito style. And cardboard works best because it's a little heavier than regular paper, it will hold up. So I bubble cut that heart out and then I take that heart and now I cut it out with my scissors and this becomes my stencil. This is what I will repeat over and over again in my artwork. I trim off this little pointy part here. And then if I want the heart in the O, here I go. This becomes my stencil. And now I trace it with my pencil. Obviously you wanna put the hearts going in all different directions. That makes for a better composition. I could have them going off the letter, off the page we call that. And I could fill up my area of the letter with my heart. So I love how this is looking. So if you wanna make one of his flowers, you know, draw a simple flower and cut it out like I'm doing, and that could become your stencil for your project. Now, once I do that, obviously, I wanna make sure my pencil lines are really light. So use your block eraser versus a pencil eraser, and I can go over it. Whether I'm gonna use magic marker, crayon, or colored pencil, you don't want people to know that you were using a pencil. It's all about craftsmanship and having a quality piece of work. So I would do that and then I couldn't continue to color. Now, as you see my word Bravo, as I was drawing it, trying to make all the letters the same height and the same width, I kind of ran out of room on my right and on my left, I have a big space here. So how can I fix this to make this look better? Well, obviously I can trim my paper right to the edge of the B so that would line up with the O. So I'd use a ruler and trim it and now it fits better compositionally in the page. Or one of the options you did have was I said, you can cut out your letters and you could actually glue them to a piece of construction paper. So if I wanted to do that again, I would bubble cut around my word first makes it easier than all that extra paper kind of flapping in the wind there, right? And then I would start to cut out each letter, right? And my letters I chose to overlap. Um, you also had a choice where the letters can be non-overlapping, but whichever one you got, whichever one you choose, you have to stick with it and be consistent. So either all the letters overlap or none of the letters overlap, right? So I'm gonna keep cutting these out and then obviously then I can center it nicely on my construction paper and this would look a lot better. A lot of kids ask, well, how do I get to the inside of these letters? You know, a lot of people probably taught you in the end, fold the paper and cut that out, but I can't stand having a crease there. So there's a few things you can do. If you have a big shape like the O here um, for the circle, I could take a sharp pencil and just poke it through. I don't wanna kind of stab it. I just wanna lean and put a little pressure there. And then the right way to cut this out is not from the top, but you would go from the bottom. So if you had me last year in seventh grade, these were the basic cutting techniques that we did. And hopefully you remember that and you could get some good practice, right? So I can cut it out. And now the inside of my O is cut out nice and neat. And then I don't have to worry about a crease mark. But what happens if I have a really small space? If I try to punch this out, it's not really going to work because the pencil is going to rip it. So there's a few things. You could actually cut what's called a slit. 
So I can just go up straight to the part that I wanna cut out, okay, one line, and then I turn the paper while I cut, another little cutting tip, right? Turn the paper, turn the paper, and then I cut it out. Now, when I glue down my letters in the end, you won't even see that line anymore. So if you just make one simple slit, you're good to go. So hope you have fun doing some Romero Brito work and send out a positive message, message to everyone. Share it with your family, text it, put, put it on your Instagram, hang it in your house window. Have a great day. Bye.